a lot of people think that that clan members uh, sort of have this um, the hopeless romantics with their sort of lost in the misty past of uh, highly improbable events. Uh -huh. Actually, I'd argue that our past gives us a really firm foundation, yes. a rootedness, mm -hmm. and it gives us the strength to engage with the present and also enables us to stride confidently into the future. Welcome again to Scott Week 2021, day two. We are so happy you could join us here. I'm very excited for this next segment. Um, and we have with us Dame Pauline Hunter of Hunterston, head of the clan Hunter. We have Ian McGillivray, commander, clan McGillivray, also member of clan Hatton, my clan, and Michael McFarlane, president of International Clan McFarlane Society. Welcome to all three of you. And this is all about how to lead a clan in the modern day. Well, who wants to start? Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Madam Polly, why don't you tell us about some of the work that you're doing over in your uh, clan's homeland? and which is your an ancestral home. You're the 30th chief yeah. uh, clan hunter, uh, an unbroken to... succession of chiefs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're all, I'm also the fifth female clan chief because mm -hmm. unlike other countries in Scotland, uh, we're ruled by Celtic law. And of course, women have equal rights to men. Mm -hmm. So I happen to be the eldest, hence, why I'm clan chief. And I'm actually, as I said, the fifth female of the hunters. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, this keeps us in the direct line. But we're very fortunate clan hunter in actually still having our own peel tower, our own clan seat still in the hands of the family that originally built it mm -hmm. and still intact. It's now a museum for clan members and others to visit. Mm -hmm. How is the work, the, the work that you've been doing on the property uh, coming along? Well, we've been, the property, the, the keep itself is in reasonably good condition, but mm -hmm. of course, uh, old buildings need repairing and we're in the process of applying for charity status for mm -hmm. Hunterston Castle to enable it to become, um, so we can apply for grants and donations so that they're tax free. Uh, to keep it in the condition that it is in now, and also to create a visitor center for the clan members. Yeah, you had mentioned before that you were um, renovating uh, some old workshops on the property to make them different facilities to be part of the Heritage yeah. Center. Yeah, we have that. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's a lot of people think that that the clan members uh, sort of have this um, the hopeless romantics with the uh, sort of lost in the misty past of uh, highly improbable events. Uh -huh. Actually, I'd argue that our past gives us a really firm foundation, yes. a rootedness, mm -hmm. and it gives us the strength to engage with the present and also enables us to stride confidently into the future. And I mean, Ian and myself and yourself, we are the front face of our clans, but mm -hmm. we're also the glue that holds our worldwide organizations together. Yes. And, and it's, it's a, a duty I enjoy and great, mm -hmm. great pleasure from, but it's something that I take quite seriously as well. And I really, I mean, I celebrate and, and enjoy our past. I cherish our history mm -hmm. uh, and our traditions, but I'm not stifled by it. Uh, it. It emboldens me in many ways to be able to take, you know, and challenges me to take us forward into the future. Yes. Uh, somebody once quoted to me, the, the great Yale scholar Pelican once said 
tradition is the living faith of the dead. Yes. And I see that as a, as a great motto for us in taking our plans forward into the future in, a, in an invigorated way. Whether we have clan lands or not, it mm -hmm. is still this wonderful collection of people who've come together with this shared history, shared traditions. But it's, it's, it gives us a really good foothold mm -hmm. and, and a rootedness that we can take forward with us. I mean, yeah. Ian, what do you feel? I'm passing the buck yeah, to I, you. I agree with yourself, Pauline, and um, yeah, I, I, I agree with yourself. Um, I think I think the traditions at the moment we it's it, it's kind of there's a famous battlefield band expression. It's their slogan. It's called "Forward with Scotland's Past," and I feel that's what we're doing. That Pauline's doing with the Huntersdon clan, and what I'm doing with the clan McGilvery as well is we're taking uh, we're we're taking McGilvery's forward with their past, and it, it's so important to look back but to look ahead, and you can. The traditions in our country, we, we can, they're so iconic and so identifiable that um, it's so important that we hold on to those traditions. And that's what links the diaspora together is seeing these iconic things, the kilt, the bagpipe, um, the, speaking the Gaelic, their clan traditions, and we all associate it with a clan and we all find the route to our clan lands eventually. Yeah. Right. So I agree with Pauline entirely. Yeah. So um, Madam Pauline and Ian, I know you've uh, done a lot of work in reaching out around the globe to your uh, to your fellow uh, clan people, like in Australia, New Zealand, and uh, the North America, uh, how what how I mean was was all this in place when you became chief, or is it basically what you've done at, at personally to reach out? I've um, when I took over as clan chief, it was I can't remember twenty oh, more than twenty five years ago, so. Um, Emails were just starting. So uh, we built a website. Um, rather, I built a website and I've just moved with the technology. Yeah. Uh, and what we've done now is we have all this wonderful technology and it's enabled me to connect with so many of my clan members that we've mm -hmm. now, we now have regular Zoom meetings. Uh, and anybody who's a member of the clan can join us. Mm -hmm. And we've started to see that people are connecting with each other as well. So that's what I am. I'm, I'm as well as being a steward of the castle, I'm also an enabler for people to connect together. Mm -hmm. Ian, right. what have you been up to? Yeah, it's, it's, I think you put it so well there, Pauline. You, you, you described it perfectly. I don't think I can really add to that. Um, the only thing is that at the moment what I'm doing is, like Pauline, it's, um, we're, we're trying to, one of the main challenges with the clan these days is, is getting young folk involved. And part of me has come to accept that it's, it's, it's just a, it's an interest for middle-aged to older folk that are interested in the clan. Maybe it's something they get interested to when they're older. But the way media has become a really strong thing in, in connecting clans from around the world and connecting the diaspora, and it's a great way of reaching out to the younger folk as well. And to kind of make those intergenerational chain, those intergenerational links. And um, one thing I found was that uh, with the power of social media as well, especially now, is that you can, it's as quick as putting a video up or a message to your clan. I mean, I give a Christmas message every year to connect with the clan. And at the moment, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm mixing kind of, we're trying to, again, taking the clan traditions forward with the past is we're mixing a lot of dance music. There's a big dance music scene in Scotland and Europe in general. And it's, it's kind of big in the States and certain parts of the US and North America and in different parts of the world. But we're trying to mix Scottish music with dance techno music. And in a way, you're combining the tradition with the old and the new, the ancient with the modern. And in a way, you can hit all the bases, the old, the young. And it's a, I, I, that's my take and that's my aim at the moment is to try and use that to, as a tool to try and garner interest from everyone. And I wanted to just bring up real quick, if I may interject, um, that we will be taking Q&A from the audience. So if you are watching right now, please feel free um, to post some questions to these, these three people. And I wanted to also point out Ian um, had 
was going to have a, a huge gathering in Scotland last year as well. And he had to cancel that. And also we were going to have a mom, but we had to, we, we couldn't do it this way. With Graham McTavish, you've been part of um, men in kilts two times now and played on the Culloden battlefield for these gentlemen when they, when they filmed that series. So I just wanted to bring that up and please feel free everyone to ask questions. Yeah, it was yeah, it was a great it was a great opportunity, and largely thanks to yourself, Cindy, as well. It was it was great to be involved in something like that, and to to meet Graham McTavish and Sam Hewen and Michelle Methvin, and it was fantastic. It was they're great guys, and also Gary Lewis as well. And um, it was great to be able to do something on such a poignant battlefield as Culloden, and with something so new as well. In terms of media, we're just talking about it, and Outlander has really gained such a global outreach, and it has brought even those without any Scottish heritage or any descendancy from this part of the world has gained an interest in Scottish traditions and Scottish custom and, and history and everything and they're really into it as well I mean Graham, Graham's a great guy he's great crack as we say here and so is Sam and they're really into their traditions and of course Graham being a McTavish as well he's descended from Jacobites I'm sure many of his ancestors would have been involved with the Macintoshes, McFarlands, Hunterstons, McGillivrays we go back a long way and um, yeah, it was great to be involved in something like that, and uh, yeah, really, a real privilege. Um, mm -hmm. Back to uh, recruiting uh, younger people, I couldn't agree more. Um, I don't know a lot if you know my background, but you know, I became a leader of Clan McFarlane when I was 27 years old, wow. and I used to shock the people at the games. They were, you know, because like when I was young, I used to actually sleep in my clan tent at the festivals. And it inspired a lot of people, but it also inspired a lot of people that are my own age. Um, a lot of times when we show up for gatherings and stuff, people are are very shocked about how many young people we do have. You know, I mean, our our uh, commissioner in Scotland is under thirty, and uh, we have uh, many others that are that are of this age group that are are part of us uh, in Australia as well as North America. So it can be done. Uh, you just have to know how to reach them. That's 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 how you do it. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think what yourself and, and uh, Diane have done for the Clan McFarlane has been truly exceptional. I mean, you really use the internet and and media in, in a great in a great way to, to try and gain interest in everything. And I know some McFarlands in Scotland here that I've just passed them your details as well. So yeah. oh, really connecting with folk in the old country here as well, which is which is fantastic. Okay. Um, because I think like like Pauline as well, and uh, we were talking about this as well, but I think that the interest in clans at the moment is definitely outside of Scotland. It's kind of the tables have turned from being from being once a, a tradition very much prominently in Scotland, you know, each clan to their own blend, the seat of the clan, McFarland or Hunterston. Mm -hmm. And now it's it's now become so diverse, it's become so global. The main thing keeping clan traditions alive are folk like yourself in the United States and Canada, in Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Argentina different parts wherever the Scottish diaspora are. And, and I think it's just, um, it, it's, it's amazing how it's, how it's come to that, really. Well, in a lot of countries like the United States and, and others around the world where Scots have settled, uh, we actually see um, being a Scot as our race. Our, you know, I'm an American citizen. I have an American passport, but we're a country that's made up of immigrants. So most of the immigrants in this country, actually, we still consider where we came from our actual our ethnic heritage and a lot of times we've lost touch with that over the years and so it's very important to us to reconnect you know with uh, you know our native homelands and our traditions and and everything else and so we we take it very seriously over here um i feel that the attitude that i that we have found now not so much anymore but the attitude that we that I found when I first uh, went to Scotland and was looking to reestablish our heritage there uh, is that people think that if you're born somewhere else, that's what you are. So, you know, Hamish McDonald from the Isle of Skye could have a child in, in London, but he's English now. He's no longer Scottish, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's our I mean, it's our race. I mean, that's that's what we are. It's our ethnicity. It's, it's more than just a nationality. Yes, it is, isn't it? Uh, it yeah. It's like as if that Scottish DNA is permanently all the way through us, like 
a piece of rock, you know, it's like the lettering that goes through us. We are Scots wherever mm -hmm. we happen to live or wherever we were born. Yeah. That, that's who we are. Uh, and, yeah. and all Scots are like that too. It, it, yeah. I don't know whether it's unique to Scots, but it is something that we hold very close to ourselves. Oh, yes, very much. Um, I always tell people that the smog in L.A. made my voice come in funny, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's so true. I think that there is something unique. I mean, um, especially with the kind of, even with the iconic image we have, the kilt, the bagpipe. And I mean, just yesterday we had the 275th anniversary of Culloden. And um, when I think back to the, the Scots have always defied any kind of um, suppression, invasion, or any kind of kind of imposition that's come across them. And even just, just yesterday, we, uh, we we were commemorating the fallen dead at Culloden. But also in a way, I'm so proud, if you turn it, I'm so proud that we, we've actually defied everything that was set out that day to be extinguished, i.e. wearing of the kilt, um, playing of the bagpipe, speaking our Gaelic language, yeah. our, our celebration of the <laughs> such Scottish things. I know, and we're all still here. I mean, we've defied it, you know, and we, we've done that since the first documentation of this country since the Romans to the Vikings that, of course, hunters didn't be involved at the Battle of Laris and yeah. the McGillivrays and McFarlands. Each clan has had its part in Scottish history yeah. and each clan has really shaped the country and its and its whole timeline, really. And, and I think that's amazing. And we've got such a unique tradition of defiance and keeping our identity, retaining, maintaining identity yeah. and our heritage links. And, and the diaspora is a huge part of that, the Americans, Australians. They're really the ones that, the spirit, the enthusiasm, that's where the life is at the moment, I feel. Yeah. Now, now, Ian, you're a, uh, you are a clan commander of, uh, of Clan McGillivray. Um, why don't you talk about the process you went through to become commander and how that works and, and what your role is now? So, um, I, unlike, unlike Pauline, I, I'm, I was elected as a clan commander. We had an ele electoral process, which was a democratic process. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we, we, our chiefship remained dormant within the clan McGillivray for almost 100 years, and uh, we hadn't had a clan chief since then. So um, the current Lord Lyon, uh, who's fantastic as well, very proactive, um, mm -hmm. he, was, he said, you can't have a clan without a chief. You can't have a chief without a clan. So he said, we must elect a leader. And it was a unanimous vote among the clan McGillivray diaspora worldwide. And, and I got elected surprisingly to my own to my own surprise as well. And it was on the eve of Culloden anniversary, two, 270th anniversary in 2016. And um, similar to Pauline now, I have a role of leading the clan and, and they look to me as, as, as taking the lead and, and making decisions to help retain interest, to help gain interest and also to kind of keep the momentum going, keep the, keep the traditions alive and, and also to keep it developing as well. And um, it, it, I'm learning along the way. I mean, I, I, I can get great advice from yourself, Michael, and yourself, Pauline, as well. You've got great experience, the both of you, um, just with leadership. And um, it's, it's, it's a privileged position to be involved in. It's a real honor uh, to be in that kind of position, and uh, especially at a young age. And, uh, but I, I'm still learning. I get advice from a lot of people, a lot of clan chiefs as well, yeah. and a lot of leaders of all, all walks of life. And that stood me in really good stead, to be honest. So you serve as commander for 10 years then? That's correct, yeah. So yeah. I serve for, I think we, we have a vote. We were meant to have a vote this year, but because of the current pandemic, it's going to be shifted to either later this year or next year. Mm -hmm. But it's going to happen, and we, we might fit it in with our clan gathering, which we have to, we've had to postpone until next year. Mm -hmm. But um, I think if I get elected again, then it lasts for another five years. And then it does. beyond that, I think that's when you become chief, if I'm right in saying that, Pauline. Yeah, I think that, I believe that's the right, right way that they go at this. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's great for people to have, although we're figureheads, we're not unapproachable, but it is wonderful for people to have that person that they can actually connect with, that represents where their family came from in Scotland, their ancestral roots. Um, mm -hmm. It's, And I think, I believe that as clan chiefs, presidents, commanders, whatever we are, amidgerous clans, that we should be all connecting with each other as well mm -hmm. uh, and supporting and giving each other help and advice or just sharing yes. problems with each other. You know, how do we engage younger people? 
uh, you know, how do we keep uh, get our clan lands back? How do we preserve our heritage? Uh, how do we grow into the future? Well, I'm going to jump in for a second, and we're going to start taking some questions from everybody, guys. Yeah. But the one question that we have right now comes from Graham, and he wants to know, have you seen growth in your clan membership in certain countries of the world that he's he's seen in a, a growth of... Um, growth yeah. in South Africa where they are mm. and wondered if you found the same in certain countries and if the pandemic has given you the opportunity to reach out to more internationally as yeah. the world has become smaller during this time. Yes, um, I've seen a growth. I've got now uh, members in South Africa uh, as well as South America. We have a, a substantial <laughs> cohort of hunters in <laughs> South America uh, and I'm sure there are other ones out there I've had people from Europe get in touch as well um, yes it, it's and the pandemic has actually given us the tools to engage with people face to face uh, we've had clan AGMs online now um, people take it for granted that we're going to engage with them I have to do different time zones for different people in different countries, but we, we manage it and people are engaging and they're really interested, really interested. What are you finding, Ian? Yeah, I, I think the same as well. Um, I, think we, we've, I mean, it's a shame in a way that our clan gathering, our international yeah. gathering was cancelled the last year because we actually were expecting the biggest, the largest gathering possibly in our history and also the most internationally reaching or the most globally reaching gathering as well and for the first time we had people from south america potentially coming from south africa as well and um, we had ones from japan from different parts of europe and um, obviously united states and canada but we also had um, for the first time a mcgillivray pipe band from canada and um, pledged th their honor in coming over which would have been a first for us so it was we were expecting i mean i think we were expecting in total, throughout the three days, was about 700 people to come, between five and 700. And our previous gathering in 2015 was, was 89 people, about three or four different countries. And this was covering about, this time round would have been covering about 20 to 23 countries, I think, maybe. Yeah. So it's a huge leap, but I think it's, we, we've really, we've been so lucky to have this kind of riding on this wave of a fervor, just mm -hmm. with um, a lot of media coverage, a lot of being involved with certain things like Outlander and, and Men in Kilts and, and um, the BBC as well, and, and it's just been it's been fantastic. And like yourselves, what we're doing here for Scott Week, and again on a pivotal time, I think it's yeah, um, it's, it's great and a great outreach to very fortunate. Yeah, yeah. one of our um, one of our biggest areas of growth recently is we've had a lot of interest uh, come from Argentina. Mm. And, uh, and as far as we're in eighteen countries so far, but we also have um, one of our larger European. Uh, groups is actually in Germany and wow. there's quite a few of us over there as well and then you know the usual Australia Canada you know everywhere else United mm -hmm. States so it's one of my things I was um, proud of too is I, I just recently appointed a new commissioner who is our representative for a specific area and that was in Arizona and I presented it to a young lady who actually came to her first Highland Games with her father when she was three year, three weeks old, uh, <laughs> wearing a McFarland kilt. And she came and they were part of the McFarland clan presence at the uh, Costa Mesa Highland Games. And we just actually, she's now in her early 20s and we just, uh, she's now taken over the region of Arizona now. She's an air traffic controller and yeah. Okay, That's what, great yeah. guys. I'm very proud of Aaron Knox, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, we are very proud of Aaron. Yes. Let's move on to another question that you guys, uh, this comes from Alexandra. Is it recommended to be involved in just one clan or if applicable, is it recommended to try and be involved with multiple clans we may be connected with? Do you have to just be in one clan or, have, you know, your no. no, not really. You can be involved with as many clans as you like. <laughs> there are no barriers. As far as I'm concerned, there are no barriers. 
Yeah. It gets tiring though. I mean, there's a lot of work in each clan. So you know what I mean? I hope you have a lot of energy. <laughs> if, if I may just point out too, I mean, um, Ian and I are members of the Standing Council of Clan Hatton mm -hmm. together. And there are 12 major clans in this confederation. And I don't know that there was any other confederation. Um, I, you may correct me if I'm wrong. That was ever formed um, in Scotland, but no one's got a surname of Hatton as I understand it, it's just made up of these 12 major clans, Macintoshes, McGilvery's, Shaw's, McBain's, McLean's, McQueen's, um, and the like. And so for us, we're all kind of intermixed with the clans as it is. And so we automatically belong to at least two of those. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's excellent. Uh, unfortunately, the hunters had no, have no uh, other sets or connections with others. Uh, we came over with David the first. We came to Scotland with David the first, and were appointed royal huntsmen to uh, provide food and uh, hunting birds for the royal court. Mm -hmm. So, what do you? Know. you uh, there's another question here from Graham, and he would like to know what do you all as your opinion of the Outlander effect on getting younger members? Um, I think fantastic. Personally, I really do. I think it's fantastic. Yes. Uh, they did some hunt filming at Hunterston, actually. Oh, very good. But yes, it, it is shown people uh, a, a different side to Scottish history, uh, one that they can engage with. Uh, and it's created a tremendous amount of fantastic tourism interest for Scotland, as well as clan interest. It, it's been hugely beneficial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they keep, people come up to me and they ask me how true it is. And I said, well, you know, they've made it illegal to walk through standing stones back in time in Scotland about 10 years ago. But, <laughs> but other than that, it's... Uh... <laughs> I think we're having to, we're, unfortunately, we're having to wrap this up. We're almost out of time, but I just really want to thank the three of you for taking the time to come on here today. I think this is very fascinating to our, especially our American audience. Um, so Dame Pauline Hunter Hunterston, Ian McGillivray, commander of Clan McGillivray. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And Michael McFarlane, president of International Clan McFarlane Society. We're, it's a great honor to have the three of you here today. Thank you so much for being part of Scott Week. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 See you later. Bye for now. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you.